So most people, when they look to achieve some kind of progression, success, result or achievement, they think, what do I have to do? How can I do it? Or even they might think negatively and think, I don't know how to do it or, uh, ah, this is too difficult or I haven't got a solution. And they're only using the constraints of their own mind. And therein lies the problem. So I'm going to share with you some tips on how to leverage the great minds of others to accelerate your results. Uh, before I do that, though, uh, I just want to say hi to everyone. Please um, say hi back. Jason, Gary, good morning. Please um, just, you know, send me a little message to say that you're, you're watching and it's live. Ask me any question you've got. Morning, Reese. Uh, and um, I'd like you to make a couple of comments and shares as I go through this video. So um, the room I'm in, it's kind of, it sounds a bit echoey, there's a reason for that. Um, but there's a reason I'm doing this video from this room and I'll take you around in a minute. But just to remind you, I'm going to talk about how to leverage the, uh, the great minds, the masterminds of others for your own benefit, rather than um, not being able to solve problems yourself. Morning, JP. Good to see you. Morning, Eki. Um, because I think if you think about a challenge that you have, a problem, a difficulty, you know, it, it's difficult for you to solve the problem you've got with the thinking that you're at. Because in order to solve a new problem, you need to have a new realm, a new level, a new way of thinking. But you're restricted by the level of your own thinking that probably created the problem. So I'll take you, on a, I'll take you around a little bit. Nothing amazing to see, but it's useful. So this is my kind of like dining room, uh, which I like to double up as a, a boardroom. And I, I designed it that way when I, I bought the house. So let's have a little walk around. So yeah, that's actually, you can kind of get the view from the mirror. So you can see there I've got a probably 12 seat dining room, which is about the amount of family members I have. So we host some, some dinners here and things, but um, I, I double that up. Let's have a look if you can see there. So I double this up as a meeting room, a boardroom. So you can see I've got a screen there which is hooked to the home automation. So people can come and we see if I can get it for you. They can come and we can all get our Macs hooked up to it wirelessly through Apple TV. Look, you can even see we have <laughs> all the, all the, um, all the necessary food to basically a nice environment to mastermind and I'm hosting a mastermind kind of mentoring day coaching day here I just walked into the boardroom table I'm hosting one today and if there's anything that I believe leverages the most uh, that let me just get the view better oh, crouch down if there's anything that uh, leverages the, the most for you to get the quickest results in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of problems, solving bigger problems, is building a mastermind, having a mastermind alliance, if you like. Napoleon Hill wrote about it in his book, Think and Grow Rich. So here are some tips on uh, masterminding and building your own mastermind so that you can solve bigger problems. So number one is uh, you want an environment somewhere where you can go to, whether you double up your dining room as a, a masterminding boardroom or somewhere where you can go, where maybe between eight and 12 of you in a comfortable environment where you feel really good and inspired. We've got a nice view out there into the, the garden. You know, where, where you can get um, some smart people together and kind of brainstorm and rip your business to get uh, apart and stress test it and get some smart minds to, you know, uh, really go through and sense check everything that you're looking to do in your vision and your strategy. Because whilst it might sound a bit sort of, and basic to say that the environment is important. The environment is important. If you've ever been involved in long masterminds, they can be draining. Your brain's just fried after four hours of it, especially if you're somewhere dark and dingy and not very nice. Um, I, as you know, I wrote Life Leverage and I really believe in the Life Leverage philosophy. So I thought it was really important to merge passion and profession, to merge work and play. So I wanted to set up my house to be an office, a boardroom. I have a, a podcast studio, a video studio. Um, I have two gyms and everything so that I can you know, run my business and my life and everything simultaneously from the space that I live in. You know, I don't have the biggest mansion in the whole world. I don't want the biggest mansion in the whole world because I'm kind of a bit scared of big houses. Um, yeah, five, six thousand square foot, that'll do. But also, it's got to be, I, I love being able to walk into town to put podcasts on, to walk over the bridge, to go to Wagamama's or, you know, wherever and walk through the centre of town and feel inspired. So, you know, you want to set up your lifestyle um, and everything that you have in your life, all your apps and your systems. 
the next thing is you, you want mentors um, who are more successful than you in, in the areas of life that you're looking to improve. So, uh, you know, if you could have Warren Buffett on that seat, let me take you around. Uh, so if you had Warren Buffett there, if you resurrected Steve Jobs from the dead there, uh, if you had Arnold Schwarzenegger there, if you had Rob Moore here, <laughs> you know, if you had, uh, if you were part of a mastermind of the greatest minds, then you have every problem that you're ever going to encounter in your business solved immediately. Uh, so um, are you associating with the greatest minds? So if you could just make a comment in the thread uh, below, um, which people you would regard as mentors, which people you've got as mentors, give them a bit of a shout out and say thanks to them, uh, or which people you would love to have as mentors. So, so you want to make sure that you surround yourself with great minds. Now, the great minds don't necessarily have to be, um, you know, polymaths or geniuses. They need to have a really good um, handle or mastery of a specific niche that you're looking. So if, if you're running a business mastermind, you've got a whiz accountant, a whiz tax advisor, a whiz marketer, a whiz salesperson, you know, a great MD, a great ops manager, um, you know, blah, 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 then, then you've got all the bases covered. Um, and, you, uh, and someone, Jason, has just said he needs to do some new friends. Um, because the, the hardest thing is to solve a problem that you've just created that you don't know how to solve yourself. The easiest thing is to find someone who's solved it, in fact, who's had that problem 15 years ago, who thinks it's really easy because they sold it years ago and they've got a small problem, they can give you a small distinction, which can save you a load of time, a load of money. All right, the next thing is, so let's take you around again, just to keep it varied, sorry that it's bumpy, is, um, in the, I've walked into the table again, uh, in Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, he talks about having a master mind in his mind. So what he does is he goes to bed at night or um, he has a big problem and he'll actually in his mind visualise, you know, the greatest people in the world. It might be Getty, it might be um, Andrew Carnegie, uh, you know, some of the, you know, might be Alexander Graham Bell. And he would actually in his mind visualise how they might solve the problem. So an amazing tip, and I do do this quite a lot, and you, know, you might think I'm slightly going a bit off the, off the wall here, but stay with me, is you create a mastermind in your mind. And as you go to sleep and as you wake up in the morning, you close your eyes, you picture yourself with your big problem, your challenge, and you actually ask the people that you're imagining there around the table, what would Steve Jobs do, what would Arnold Schwarzenegger do, what whatever your, you know, your, your, um, the, the people that you aspire to be like, what would they do? And it's amazing how your mind comes up with the solutions. And Think and Grow Rich is nearly 100 years old now. It's one of the best books ever on masterminding. Okay, the next thing is, who are you following on social media? Who are you following on YouTube? You know, whose videos are you watching? You know, because people like myself and some of the sort of, you know, the, the, the global sort of what you might call thought leaders or whatever you want to call them, some of the, you know, the big names, it might be Tim Ferriss in a podcast, it might be uh, Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk in sort of marketing and sales online. There's loads of great minds. Um, are you following on all their social platforms and consuming all their audio and video and books? Because, you know, more, more now than ever, the free line's gone like that, which means that more and more information is being given out for free. And we're in a trust economy where people are really having to do more to earn trust. Uh, and then, you know, so people who have a lot of the best free information often build the biggest and best businesses. So are you following, liking... Uh, you know, all of the people that you think could help you in business, sales, marketing, finance, vision, strategy. So it might be, it might be John Maxwell, it might be for sort of uh, leadership and management. You might, it might be the HBR Ideacast, which is a podcast on um, Harvard Business Review. So they do a lot on management and things like that. So, you know, are you building your own mastermind? Because the, the great thing about social media is that it's very bespoke. In the, If you follow everything that you really aspire to be and are inspired by, you get that information in your feed. Uh, and if you don't follow all the celebrity gossip crap and, and all the bitchy moany stuff and you unblock that and you, sorry, you block that and you hide that, in the end when you go on your feed, it's just pumping back um, positive, valuable, life-changing, money-making, business-growing information. So it's great how you can set your PC and your Mac and your phone and your social media platforms to basically program your mind, even your screensavers, you know, you can have with your goals flashing at you. So, yeah, this concept of mastermind. Uh, now, in, in, in masterminding, I think it's really healthy to have people above you, people at your level, and some people a bit below you who are aspiring to be you. 
But, you know, not, not you as in, oh, look at, you know, I want to be you, Rob, uh, sign my breasts and, you know, no, 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 let me kiss you. You know, I'm, I'm, I still have these delusions of grandeur. But because um, you should never want to be anybody else. You should want to be the best version of yourself. So you own the traits of the greats. Uh, and therefore, you know, I like to follow many people who are really successful in different areas. And I like to follow the things that I aspire to be like and, and borrow and own those traits. But also understand that they're human and not over pedestalize them and park some of the other traits. You know, uh, people can argue about this till they're blue in the face, but Donald Trump does have some ab admirable qualities. But there are just qualities you wouldn't want to pick and choose, perhaps, necessarily, or at least going to vocations that he's in, like politics, that you wouldn't want to. So are you having mentors and, and are you part of a mastermind where you're the least knowledgeable around the table or where your mentor is at a much higher level? The higher up your mentor is, the quicker, faster, easier you get dragged up. But of course, they're not free. Free advice is worth every penny. So you're going to have to dip into your pocket. You're going to have to make some things happen. You're going to have to uh, beg, borrow, steal, leverage, do whatever you can, take them to really expensive restaurants, whatever. And I believe the quality of business people is linked to the quality of their mentors. And I'm very lucky to have many Decker or 100 millionaires or even billionaires as mentors of mine. And some of them I pay 20, 30, 50,000 pounds, um, you know, either um, a year or for a certain amount of um, kind of face to face with them. Others, I just take them to really nice one and two star restaurants. Others are really good friends. And, and you, know what, you want a balance of all the relationships. People at your level. It's very important to have people at your level because you kind of, you, you know, if you, if you get a few people at your level in a room and you get a, like a big pack of post-it notes and you brainstorm yours and their businesses and you have a bit of coffee and, you know, you really, really throw things off of each other without judging it, you can come up with some magic together. And it's great to be around people who are like you, who, um, you know, who are on the same path as you, where you grow together and, you know, you, you feel like you're part of a, a team. And that's really important. And then it's really important to have people that you educate, you inspire, you're a mentor to. Because if everyone is like there and you're there, no matter how good you are, you always feel like, oh, I'm not worthy. So there can be a little bit of an emptiness there. If you're always the mentor and never the mentee, you're not growing and learning and being dragged up enough. And I really believe the greatest gift in life is to contribute, to share, to give, to inspire, to help. And so as soon as you've been mentored and your problems have been solved, you should be doing it to others which is one of the reasons why it's really important for me to do these videos and, you know, and help people. Um, and then Chris has just said iron sharpens iron. So absolutely, 100% agree. All right then, so I hope you found this video useful. Please share who your mentors are. Please share who you'd love your mentors to be. Um, uh, something else we did at Progressive and Unlimited Success, some of my companies, is when we couldn't find the mastermind that we want, because um, you know, for me, the next level is kind of the Necker Island thing, which I'm looking to do next year. I had it booked for this year, but one of Bobby's golf competitions was there. And you know, a lot of the mentors I want, they kind of don't have a mentoring program. And even if you add 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, they, they, you, know, you, you, you probably wouldn't be able to pay them. So you'd have to do some kind of joint venture. Um, but um, if you can't get in on one, then set up your own. And if you build your own mastermind, like I said, I'm running a mastermind here today for some of um, my mentees and also who are mentors. And I run a program called Inner Circle Mastermind Elite, which is just for 12 people in my home boardroom on business um, masterminding and mentoring. When you set up your own and you attract really good people, then people uh, see you as the person that, that built that. So a good friend of mine, Andy Harrington, he has um, a, mentoring, a masterminding program, he calls it The Syndicate. It's some really big, powerful minds, some very successful people in the seminar and speaking and marketing business. There are many Deca millionaires in the group. And he kind of, he gets that sort of, the, he gets the leverage of setting that up. He's almost like the head of the table. So he, he borrows the social proof and the credibility and he's put some great people together and he's introduced me to some great people. And you know, then we want to reciprocate. I set up a syndicate program quite a few years ago, which we did for, for a few years until our business kind of grew and I, I guess I thought I got a bit busy. I probably actually regret stopping that. And now we have official masterminding programs. We have a progressive mastermind program, which has had 870 people in the last six, six years on it. Um, and we have, um, you know, like I said, it's all sort of, sort of boardroom formats. Now, the great thing about masterminding over and above, say, um, being mentored one-to-one -one is, let's go back to the table. So let's say I sit down here and I share my challenge with the group and I say that, you know, um, maybe we're struggling to 
uh, hit our growth targets. Maybe um, you know uh, some of our staff are overloaded, they're making mistakes. Uh, have you got any tips that you can help? Uh, and what will happen is the mentor sat there will give me some advice and then the mentor will open up to the rest of the group and say, what are your thoughts, 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 what are your thoughts? Of course, if the mastermind um, program is run properly, and then you don't just get your mastermind, head of masterminds sort of valuable insights and lessons, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, takes, experiences. You could probably jot down three or four pages of notes. You could have 15, 20 or 30 new ideas. Then the magic of mastermind is that someone here, let's call him Steve Jobs. He's sitting at the uh, mastermind table and he comes up with his challenge, which is how to extend life. I should probably be, be a bit careful what I'm saying here. Uh, and this isn't my turn now. Um, my turn has finished. But now we go on to Steve's big challenge and he shares it with the group. And then the head of the mastermind gives his, you know, the sort of the, the highest level guru, the Dalai Lama there maybe. He gives his mentoring advice. And then, uh, and then everyone listens, so everyone else is taking notes. And then uh, this person shares, this person shares, this person gives advice, this person. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, this isn't even my go and this is gold and I'm getting all this benefit and all this value. And that's the, um, that's the amazing power of a mastermind. Now, uh, the, the masterminds we run, we have um, an application process only, and everyone uh, in, the, in the mastermind, in the group, they have to vet and okay the person coming in. Because if you've got uh, seven amazing people and one vampire sucking the blood, it's going to ruin the dynamic of the mastermind. All right, great. So, you know, it's also known as a syndicate, a mentoring group, you know. All right, so questions, comments, shares, please post them below. I'm going to carry on the conversation in the Disruptive Entrepreneurs community. So if you're not already a member, just search in Facebook, the Disruptive Entrepreneur community. These things aren't as stable as they maybe could be. So the Disruptive Entrepreneur Community, search that on Facebook, come and join. I'll carry on the questions and comments if you've got any there throughout the day, except of course when I'm doing the masterminding. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. I know, I'm sure most of you are now, but I still bang on about this. 4% of the UK know how to work a podcast. So much so, I was pissed off about that so much. And not just for me and growing my own podcast, but podcasts have completely changed my life. Um, you list them on two times speed, you know, really valuable information from, you know, really smart people. It doesn't cost any money. So I felt so pissed off about this that I actually did a video on how to find and download a podcast so that the 96% of the UK could actually work out how to do it, even if you're non-techie. All right then, so hope you've enjoyed this session. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything and carry on the debate below and in the disruptive entrepreneurs community.